Have you ever not been able to find that perfect guide for the thing you want to do? No matter how old or historyed a game is, it can be pretty difficult to find a tutorial online that specifically matches your personal needs. So if you want to learn how to make your own strategies, your own game plans, and your own self-improvement plans, stick around because I have three steps you can take to start putting the creativity, your own creativity, back into your gameplay. And of course, have it be effective as well. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and by far the biggest questions I get are from people who don't know where to start on improving their gameplay, even after watching a ton of guides. Oftentimes, I can send them on their way with a solution that works for them with only a few minutes and a couple questions, and it's not because I'm a genius, I mean, I have a lot of experience and that helps me do it quickly, but really all I'm doing is applying a simple process to analyze their problem. Uh, and I've broken that process down in this video into three steps for you so that you can use them yourself. So let's get right into it. Step number one is to state the goal. This is so important and I swear I say this in a different way seemingly every video, but you need to visualize what your success looks like. This probably sounds a bit hard and vague and sort of high in the sky, but it's actually super simple. So just listen up. I have two short examples that I think will make the concept pretty clear. First, let's take the new Riot game, Teamfight Tactics. New games can be pretty difficult to get into because there are no real authoritative sources to look at for guides and patches come out so quickly that even if you do find a good guide, it becomes out of date in like two days. So I think this is a good one. Ready? Are you ready? The first step, it's so simple, guys. Here we go. I want to win with pirates. That's it. You're done. I'm done. That's 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 as simple as stating your goal is. Just what, what do you want to do? I want to play pirates. I want to move, I want to win with pirates. Okay. Example number two. We're going fast. Let's say you're playing Overwatch. You're a support player, and you want to play an aggressive Ana support. That's it. You did it. You want to play an aggressive Ana support. All done. See how easy that is? It sounds obvious, it sounds almost patronizing, but I swear to you, I swear over 90% of the players I see, the players who come to me do not have this down. They don't have it in their mind. They'll say things like, oh, I, I lose a lot with Anna, what do I do? Or I can't hit platinum even though I've tried for two months. Then they just like link a VOD and ask for help. 90%, I'm telling you, I'm telling you 90%. And in many of these cases, it takes just clarifying with them what their actual goal is. Their goal is not, I'm losing with Anna. You know, they wanna be something. They wanna be a sick Genji player who assassinates backline supports. They wanna be a Reinhardt who flawlessly defends his team. You know, they wanna get, they wanna be a Widowmaker who gets mad headshots. And like I said, sometimes I literally just clarify without them and I'm saying, okay, then um, what do you, you should probably be focusing on landing headshots, huh? And they're, they they like have had an epiphany. Oh, you're right. I should probably focus on getting headshots if I want to be a Widowmaker who makes sick, head, sick headshots. And they go practice headshots and it improves their game. They come back and they say, wow, I did it really well. I improved 200 300 MR just by practicing headshots. It sounds nuts, okay? But this is probably you on a certain level, even if you're not that bad. Okay, so I hope I convinced you. Anyway, step two, you got your goal. You want to win with pirates. You want to win by playing uh, an aggressive Anna in Overwatch. I don't know. Okay. So now you just start from there, start from that, and you take two jumps back. Don't worry. This is also easy. Okay. It's not rocket science. I'm going to go through it with you. Two examples. Here we go. Let's take the Anna one, the Anna example, right? You want to win with an aggressive Anna. Well, what things do you need to do to win the game? You have a limited definable number of things you can actually do in the game of Overwatch to influence whether you win or lose. And they are your primary fire, your sleep dart, your grenade, and your nano boost. You literally, within the definition of the game, cannot do other things. All right, you can move around, but that doesn't by itself do anything, right? All right, now we have that. We have this, right? That's one. Now let's take one more back because I said two jumps back. So we're gonna take one more jump back. What are the different ways you can use the primary fire? Well, you have heal and damage. Okay, that's it. You can scope and unscope, but it doesn't change the fact that you're either healing teammates or damaging enemies a certain amount, right? All right, next, sleep dart. It can be used offensively to push forward into a fight or defensively to uh, and save, save to defend yourself against assassins and the whatnot. Grenade has heal or damage, you know, heal or anti. And then nano boost takes two inputs. Uh, it's the hero that you're using it on and when you're using it on them. 
And that's it. I didn't make that up. That is very objectively clear. We're just defining the possible things you can do that affect your ability to win the game as Anna. Now, if you drill down much deeper than that, you're getting to mechanical skills and aim and such, which is all good. And I'll cover that, how that works at the end of the video, but it's not part of the three-step process. Do stick around though, if you wanna learn more about that, because it's a little bit interesting. I have a little bit to say about it. Uh, but that's it for Anna. The, the Anna, uh, this is, that's it. That's step two for Anna. Let's go over to the team fight tactics example before we go to step three. So remember in the last step, we said we wanted to win with pirates. All right, so step two, first we jump backwards. And literally, what does it take to win? Okay, in teamfight tactics, we do damage, we tank damage, and I guess I can put crowd control in there. That's a good category to have. So we have those three, right? Take dam uh, deal damage, take damage, and crowd control. Now let's take our second jump back. How do we do damage? Well, you can't directly control anything in teamfight tactics. You can't command your units. You can't do anything. There's only one way you can influence the game, and that's by buying champions. So. Here we just list all of the primarily damage dealing champions, quite simple. For tanking, we list all the primarily frontline tanky champions, and for crowd control, we list all of our AoE stuns and such. Um, okay, that's a lot of heroes, uh, except, oh wait, actually, no, not really, because remember, we just care about the pirates. We can't make a team with only four champions though, because there's only four pirates, so we should look at the pirates' classes, because there's a type and a class in this game. So, if we take a look at the classes of the pirates, we pretty much have Blade Master, Assassin, and Gunslinger to choose from. So. We can add in all the Blade Masters, Assassins, and Gunslingers, and then our crowd control slot is still empty. So let's just find a couple generically strong crowd control champions, put that in, and we pretty much have all of our immediately obvious options. There might be one or two sneaky ones that we come across later, maybe as we play or whatever, but this is more than good enough to make something great with, just the selection. And that's step two. Let's go ahead and move on to step number three. So far, we've stated our goal and we've worked backwards a little bit so that we've populated a few different variables that we can play with, tweak, slide back and forth. Uh, if you're following along and you're trying this on your own project or whatever, and you're winding up with a ton of variables at this step, uh, it's probably because your goal needs to be more specific. But step three here is the most fun part because now you're simply assigning your variables. You're, you're tweaking the dials, that's it. It's like handing out currency or balancing a scale. So let's uh, go ahead and look at our examples. For the aggressive Anna example, let's take her primary fire. Okay, so we have damage or healing. Let's assign how much we want to dedicate to damage and to healing because remember, this is a, an aggressive Anna, so we should try assigning a bit more damage than you'd normally think. If a regular Anna heals like, I don't know, maybe 90% of the time or more, let's try 75%. That's pretty aggressive. That's a lot of damage dealing for an Anna. For sleep darts, we obviously want to be using the cooldown on the aggressive option, so we're gonna choose the aggressive option here. Uh, same for the grenade, we want to be using the anti-grenade whenever possible. And for the ultimate, I, I mean, I guess we'll just be wanting to put this on whatever our relevant DPS hero is, and we wanna use it to open up the fight Something like that. That sounds pretty good. Or at least sounds like it makes sense, right? So now you can actually go into a game and try this out. And this is like your playbook, all right? And it's awesome because after the game, you will know exactly what variables you can change. It's like, it's easy mode. You can go back to each node here and you can ask yourself what happened. You know, oh, how, how was it? Focusing exclusively on anti-grenades. -grenade, oh, well that actually worked pretty well. I got some sick plays. What about the sleep? Oh, well, I missed most of my sleeps. Okay, so that probably isn't an issue with the strategy itself, um, but it means that you should probably go practice your sleeps or watch a guide specifically about hitting sleeps, so you know exactly what to do there. Or, um, you know, maybe your tanks were dying a bit faster than you'd normally, normally like because you were too busy sniping enemies. That's probably a sign that you should bring the healing number back up, right? And uh, the thing is, really, you don't even need to put that much thought into it. It's just trial and error. 
Sure, I have a lot of experience, so I can probably get it right in less tries than most people, but you will get there given enough iterations, and not even that many iterations. Even if you change the variables completely at random, which you hopefully won't be. You'll hopefully be putting a little bit of your own thought into it. Give it a couple days, and you'll have a solid playstyle that you'll be able to actually feel the pulse of, understand, and control because you didn't just blindly follow it in a guide. And now you'll actually get more benefit out of guides than before because you'll be able to apply your own perspective to what you're being taught and again, assimilate that into your own thing. So it's now it now belongs to you. It's not that guy, whoever made the video you're copying. It's actually your, it's internalized now. For team fight tactics, you can do the same thing. Just try different compositions that fit within this framework. You know, maybe one day try pirate assassins with like a late game Cho'Gath or Sejuani or something in one game. Uh, you can try Gunslinger with a Shen and an Aatrox on the front line to proc Blade Master in another game. Just try them out a bunch of times. These are your variables, so just tweak them, change them, whichever one you want to choose. And then um, as you change, you'll find that it gets better or worse. You adjust accordingly, and then eventually, not after that long either, like a couple play sessions, you'll find something that you like and that's effective. Now, I promised I would get to this by the end of the video, so I will. Uh, now, what happens when you go one step further? Like, if we took Sleep Dart, you know, we go back and we say, okay, well, uh, are we going to be aggressive or are we going to be not aggressive? What happens if we take another step back? The next step, step back is, like, how you execute that. So if you choose the aggressive option here where you want to do aggressive Sleep Darts, how do you do it? Well, you need to be positioned in a certain way. You need to aim at them and you need to aim at a certain specific target, right? These are all factors that go, these are all the variables that go into that. So if you're missing your sleep darts, for example, you can go and you can say, okay, well, is it my positioning? Let's change that. Or maybe it's my aim, let's change that. Or maybe I'm picking the wrong target at the wrong time. Like maybe it's just a really difficult target to hit, like behind a Reinhardt shield. Maybe I wanna try the, I don't know, the, the, the Anna in the back or something like that. And uh, so it's just another, it's just like the next left, the next step, right? It's like the advanced step where you want to, you go into a specific part of your gameplay and you just take a step back. Uh, and this, this is f scalable infinitely. You can just t pick whatever you want, take a step back, take two steps back, and then uh, just tweak the variables and eventually you will get it right. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos and definitely don't forget to follow me on Twitch where you can see me apply my concepts in action and Twitter and Discord to know when I do stuff. Uh, let me know in the comments as, as well if this video helped me helped you, if you're gonna try this technique out on your own projects or games or whatever. Or of course, if you have any questions, I uh, just try to boil down what's really a basic problem solving technique. So, and, and applied it to games. So I, I hope it made sense. Um, and I will see you when I stream, which I will announce on Discord or Twitter, and I will have a schedule up at some point very, very soon. So until then, I'll see you there, but until then, never forget to stay positive and have a great day. Adios.